Let's take a little trip to Germany, home of some of my ancestors way back in the day, the way I understand it, to a knife maker also named Dirk. Let's go to Midgard's Messer. This is the Slipner. <laughs> this, <laughs> you know, sometimes you look at a knife and you say, why? This is one of those. This is loaned in from Alex over at the Watch and Cut channel. Also, as you know, my co-host on the EDC Hour with Dirk and Alex. Link to both of those down below. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Yeah, I'm not sure what to say exactly. So let's dive into the specs first off. Let's get that out of the way. Four and seven eighths closed. It is a two-handed knife by design. Partially, I'm guessing, because of the knife laws outside of the United States. Overall is seven and five-eighths. Two, blade is a little strange. Measuring from the very top of the scale to the point is 2.87. So that gives you a cutting edge that's a little bit longer than the blade length, the way I measure, at 2.9. Behind the edge, for such a thick blade is crazy at 0 0.016 with a blade thickness of 0.235. So that's a crazy, crazy flat grind all the way down to like nothing. So that is pretty impressive. <clears throat> blade steel is CPM D2. Now, a lot of times you got to be careful. When it, when it says D2, like on this Kubi, where it clearly says D2, right? It may not be CPM D2. And for 60 something dollars, it probably is not. <clears throat> so when a maker actually puts on their site that it is CPM D2 because they have to differentiate themselves from standard junk D2, I appreciate that. And I wish they would get rid of the old junky D2 and only have CPM D2, but eh, you know, it's not Dirk's world. Overall thickness is 0 0.590. So this is a big boy weighs in at 7.9 ounces and it runs on phosphor bronze washers, which is okay because well, it is a one hand, a two handed knife. While there looks like there is a flipper tab, like there's something there. No, it does not work. If you look at their website, it specifically says it is a two-handed knife. There is no other way to open it. So really, that flipper tab is just... It's not really a flipper tab. It's just the way the blade is shaped to fit here in the finger toil. I, I just... I think it's genius. I think it's odd. But it's genius, the way it's just manufactured and whatnot. The finger hole, I don't know, you gunsling it. Um, interesting thing, there is an accessory that you can buy for this that is a belt buckle holder. So yes, you can clip this onto your belt in this fashion and you can wear it. Put a picture up here in the corner of that. That is an interesting thing. Depending on your locale, that may or may not be legal. Here in California, probably legal if you had your shirt tucked in. If you had your shirt up and over it, it might not be legal. I don't know. I don't spend a lot of time with the knife laws, guys. I carry what I want to carry. If it happens to be an automatic knife here in California, I carry it anyway. If that's what I'm carrying that day, that's what I'm carrying that day. At the same point, I've come to the point in my life where I do not have a lot of contact with the police. In my younger days, oh boy. Yeah, I was on first name basis with a couple of officers in my hometown. So this is an interesting knife. The finger hole... I, I don't know. It's a little uncomfortable to use the finger hole. To choke up on it here and hold it is pretty comfortable. 
the pocket clip is a little bit of a warm spot. I'm not even going to call it a hot. Eh, yeah, it's probably a hot spot. But holding it back in this fashion is way too small and feels very awkward because my pinky is there floating and it's just odd. So for me, the perfect grip would just be to choke up on it and forget about that goofy finger hole. This is a limited run. They made only 200 of these and Alex was lucky enough to get one. There will be some smudges here, but it is a nice mirrored stonewash blade, which is not my favorite. I prefer a more dull blade, actually. Big, huge phosphor, phosphor bronze washer in here on both sides. All titanium with just a pattern to make it look Timascus-ish. Titanium backspacer, like a big, huge, thick titanium backspacer with a lanyard hole. Again, titanium pocket clip with just a milling, like a, um, I guess that's a laser etched type pattern. Steel lock bar insert that does act as an over travel stop. Just kind of cool, kind of goofy, but that's okay. There is milling on the inside to help with the weight, and thank God they did because it's already almost eight ounces. If they didn't mill that out, it would be way more. You can see the steel lock bar insert in there and the milling. All in all, it's cool. I do like some of the stuff that Midgards is doing. They do a lot of different stuff. They do limited runs. They're all in that two to 300 range, much like Custom Knife Factory out of Russia. Um, so I appreciate that. You got to get in on them. I've had a couple. Dirk sent me a couple before. Um, but eh, sometimes we don't chat all that often. So, but yeah, this is a cool one in a odd and unique way that I didn't want one or need one. So I'm fortunate that Alex sent it up so I could check it out, but not really something I need in my collection. Please go check out Alex's channel down below. Please make sure you are subscribed and are following us on the EDC Hour channel. And have a great day.